right. Hello, hello, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about why there's no such thing as perfect love, but there is good enough love, and learning how to get ourselves to a place where we can enjoy good enough love, where we can experience good enough love, where we can be in good enough love, and where we can allow good enough love to be good enough and move into this place where we're no longer, like I say, kind of looking for the perfect thing and constantly being disappointed and constantly thinking that there's something wrong with us, that we aren't able to create perfect love or constantly thinking that there's something wrong with the people that we're relating with because they can't give us perfect love and figuring out what the kind of just healthy middle ground balance looks like and how that feels and how, again, we can find a really good place of loving our friends, loving our families, loving our lovers, loving our partners, loving our coworkers, loving one another without, again, looking for this perfection and looking for this level of perfect safety that is likely never going to exist in our adult relationships. Okay, so starting from the very beginning, I want to make it very, very clear that when we are looking at this topic of healthy love, here's something that I say pretty often. If you want to be a coach and you want to be a, a successful online spiritual boss babe coach of any kind, teach that you can teach one of three things. Tell people that you know how to make them rich. Tell people that you know how to make them perfectly healthy. And tell people that you know how to teach them how to manifest or create perfect relationships. If you posture yourself as being able to deliver on one of these three things, perfect wealth, perfect health, perfect love, you will probably be steadily employed for the rest of your life, whether you can actually deliver on this or not, because these are fundamental things that most people in society are chasing, are trying to cultivate in their lives, and see as the barrier between themselves and the happiness they want to experience. And that makes perfect sense because to us, right, depending on where we're coming from, depending on where our struggles are at, depending on whatever we're experiencing, we are going to notice that at the end of the day, what we want as human beings is safety. And when we say safety, what we mean is the feeling or the understanding or the, the perception that we are going to be able to get our needs met and that in getting our needs met, we're going to be able to expand and grow and have experiences. That's what we fundamentally want as human beings. We want safety because to us, when we feel safe, what we mean by that is I am going to get my needs met. I am going to have my basic needs met, my mental, like my physical needs met, my mental and my emotional needs met, and my spiritual needs met. And I'm going to be free from pain and therefore able to express myself, to grow, to have experiences, and that this is going to allow me to live a life. Right? Like that's what it is to be human. That's what it is to be alive. And we seek wealth and we seek health and we seek love because these three things are generally pretty fundamental to us experiencing that safety and then experiencing that capacity to expand and grow and express. Yes? So this is why our entire world, our entire economy, pretty much everything that we experience is set up around obtaining one of these three things or all of these three things or getting these three things if we don't have them. And again, 
we need to first acknowledge and validate. Acknowledge and validate that this is not an illusion. This is not ego. This is not separation consciousness, right? It is absolutely practically true that to a degree, we need money, we need wealth in order to get our needs met. That's not a fiction. That's not something we're making up in our minds. That's a literal reality of the structure we're currently living in. Money is a part of this. So right off the bat, right? Like we're not saying that anyone can just be perfectly and completely at peace and happy with absolutely nothing. Because as long as you're a human being, there's going to be that part of you that gets triggered into fear when we don't have a security of how we're going to get our needs met. Okay, that's just how it is. And there's no shame in that. And there's no blame in that. And, and again, this is why part of the whole like deconstructing from our systems and our society and all this stuff is about understanding where our enough is, right? So it's not about this black and white thinking of saying, I either need to be extremely wealthy, living in luxury, and that's the only way to be happy. Nor is it about being like, I can be happy with absolutely nothing and I should be able to be completely without need because we're never going to be without need and it's always going to be triggering to not know where your next meal is coming from, to not know if you can pay your rent, to not know if you're going to have safety, okay? So that's part of it. Second thing, when we don't have our health, when we don't have... When we're in chronic pain, when we're chronically exhausted, when we're chronically hurting, this is going to affect our quality of life. And I think that that's just, again, a reality that is real. That when we are in pain, that when we are struggling, that when we are suffering with our physical health, it has an effect on how we feel. It has a huge effect on our mental health, on how we relate to others, on how we're able to provide and support ourselves. It has a massive effect. So that people chase perfect health and they want to get to a place where they can feel like they're never going to get sick of that again or that they can internally do whatever they need to do so that they can heal all things and never be ill again, of course. Okay? And then the third thing, which is what we're talking about today, which is love. This idea of being able to find a perfect relationship or perfect relationships where we are never abandoned again, where we are never judged again, where we are seen in our wholeness, where we are able to express and grow and be fulfilled and be supported and support, that is always going to read as safety to us for a multitude of reasons, okay? So... This is the crux of the conversation we're having here today, is first thing is understanding why we walk around as a human species. So in a lot of ways, sometimes desperate for love and connection, for relationships, for harmony in our relationships, for safety in our relationships, why we look for that perfect love why we look for perfect friendships, why we look for perfect co-workers, why we look for perfect relations in our families and with our lovers and all of these things. This is something that is deeply wired into our bodies as being an avenue towards that safety that we want and that self-expression that we want. Okay? The reason we all really want to be loved and we want to be accepted and we want to be approved of is not just because it feels nice to be accepted and when people like you it's nice and being approved of is great okay it's for many many truly deeply absolutely true real circumstantial reasons and because of our wiring and what we experienced in our childhoods so this is something we go very 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 deep into in the mystery school because When we're looking at ourselves and we're understanding 
our codependent relationship problems, our ultra independence, our our just our ways of relating to other people and how these ways may work or not work in terms of actually facilitating us and having healthy relationship dynamics. We need to understand that our patterns did not come from our adulthood. Our patterns have been nourished in adulthood and they've been evolved in our adulthood. But most of us have patterns that were imprinted in us from the very beginning of our lives when we were in a totally different circumstantial understanding of how life worked. Okay, so we need to understand that fundamentally, when we were children, when we were small children who could not understand how the world worked, who could not understand ourselves, who could not communicate, who had no control over our experience of life, what we experienced in our bodies and in our little child minds as being this is what reality is, was a situation where we absolutely depended upon our caregivers, whoever was in charge of us, whoever was around us at the time, the adults, the people who were in charge of getting our needs met. We fully depended upon them for all of our needs to be met. Okay, so a lot of people talk about how the reason we are so um, desiring to be loved and accepted and approved of is because for a very, very, very long time, we lived in tribal communities and getting kicked out of the tribe usually meant that you were going to die. And this is absolutely true, right? For a very, very, very long time, being independent was simply not an option in terms of being a human and keeping yourself alive because we didn't have the resources, we didn't have the understanding, we didn't have the requisite knowledge, we didn't have the requisite systems in place that we could actually survive on our own. So absolutely, there there may be these kind of like generational nervous system traumas that have been passed down that like acceptance equals being a part of the group equals getting my needs met and being able to express myself and grow and not be in pain. There's absolutely that. But even closer to us than that was our actual lived experience as children, which was my caregivers are my source of absolutely everything. My caregivers are the ones that take my pain away when I'm in pain. They are the ones that provide pleasure. They are the ones that create the environment for me to grow and express and have experiences. And so to the degree that we experienced not having our needs met, so not so the absence of what we needed causing us pain, so not having our needs met and not being able to express and expand and grow the way we wanted to, or to the extent that we were antagonized. So there was the presence of something that was harmful, that was hurtful, that was out of alignment with reality in terms of us being safe and us getting our needs met. And to the degree that we were in pain that our caregivers couldn't fix. So again, it's not always that they didn't meet our needs or that they were harming or abusing us. But sometimes we were literally in pain, like we had chronic illness or we had something going on that they just couldn't rescue us from, that they literally couldn't make better for us. To the degree that those things were happening, we were going to be internalizing that we were doing something wrong, that we were the cause of us being in pain and our caregivers antagonizing us or not showing up for us because from our childhood perspective our caregivers were gods from our childhood perspective we could not understand 
that our caregivers had limited capacity. We could not understand that our caregivers might do things and have reactions and responses and things that they did during their day and during their life and how they interacted with us that had nothing to do with us, right? We couldn't understand that they come home from a long day at work. We want to play. They're exhausted. They tell us to be quiet. And we feel rejected and we feel like we're not safe because we think we've done something wrong because I just didn't get my need met. I just felt separation from my caregiver. And we couldn't perceive caregivers just tired, caregivers just overwhelmed. This has nothing to do with me. We would have perceived, what did I just do wrong? What did I just do to cause that separation? So when we were in pain, when we were experiencing not getting our needs met, when we were experiencing being antagonized, when our caregivers weren't rescuing us from our pain or giving us the things that we want, we were internalizing all of that as being something we were doing wrong. Because from our perspective, again, caregivers were gods. Caregivers had access to everything. Caregivers were capable of everything. And therefore, if they weren't meeting our needs, if they weren't doing what we needed, if we weren't being supported, it was our fault. We learned deep down that to be loved and seen and understood by our caregivers was to have safety, to get our needs met, and then to be able to grow and express how we wanted to. We perceived that any fragmenting of that love or that connection being the reason we were in pain. Okay? And then we would then make up stories about what it was about us and what we were doing wrong the parts of ourselves that we now have shame, blame, and guilt about as adults, most of that started in our childhoods when we were perceiving, I'm not getting my needs met, I'm being antagonized, I'm not being rescued from my pain. And then what we were associating as being the reason that was happening because of us. And again, that reason may have been true. It could be that our caregivers really were rejecting parts of ourselves, rejecting behavior, getting mad at us for certain things. But also, at the same time, we could have been misperceiving the situation. We could have totally been perceiving that the reason caregivers are pulling away or the reason caregivers aren't doing this is because I'm annoying, is because I'm too much, is because I'm whatever, whatever. And it was not anything to do with that. That's not why the caregivers were meeting our needs or not meeting our needs. That wasn't the actual expectations our caregivers had. That's just how we were perceiving it as children. So that starts us off with an understanding that getting my needs met, being safe, being able to express myself comes through the middleman of being loved, accepted, and approved of by those around me. I need to be loved in order to be safe. Do you understand that connection? This is why we all have this. I need to be loved in order to get my needs met and in order to be safe. And to the degree, again, to the degree that we weren't getting our needs met, to the degree that we were in pain that we weren't being rescued from, to the degree that we were being antagonized, is the degree to which we are going to have ideas about ourselves, parts of self we reject, parts of self we hate, and the degree to which we would have started to develop coping mechanisms for trying to get love in ways that our childhood self perceived we needed to do and we needed to be in order to get that love, that we would then have evolved and evolved and evolved throughout our lives and this then forms what we believe relationships are. Okay, so what we believe relationships are, who we believe we need to be in relationships, what we think we need to fulfill for that other person, what we think is good and bad, right and wrong, appropriate, not appropriate behavior, what parts of ourselves we think are good and what parts of ourselves we think are bad, all of this usually not always, but usually has its roots in what we were perceiving 
our caregivers were thinking and feeling in our childhoods when we were dependent upon them for everything. So our coping mechanisms, our codependencies, the way that we fawn, the way that we become super independent and try to have no needs, the parts of ourselves, like I say, that we think are unacceptable and that we can't be, and the things that we think that we have to do and that we have to be in relationships, this usually comes from what we experienced in our relationships with our caregivers and with our early peers. Like during our early youth, if we were bullied, if we were treated unfairly at school, if we were not accepted and not approved of for who we were, how we learned to adapt with th to that, right? How we learned to abandon ourselves and to try to be what everyone wanted us to be because usually in childhood, we're not strong enough to say, it's okay, I can be rejected, I can go on my own, I can be all right, right? When we're rejected in our childhoods from, with our youth and with our peers, it's the same kind of uh, wounding, that there's something wrong with me, I, I don't like myself, and I need to change myself in whatever ways the people around me are expecting me to change myself in order that they will like me. Because again, fundamentally, we have this perception that safety comes from being approved of. Because it did. It really, truly, actually did in our childhoods. Okay, so that's where we developed our lens. And then what happens from there is that this fundamentally forms how we perceive from then forward. It puts a filter over our perception. And this is where we start to be able to reinforce our stories that everyone thinks this way, this is what everyone expects of me, this is what I have to do and have to be and everyone thinks like that and these are my relationship patterns and this is what I'm doing. Because after we kind of have developed those ideas from our childhood experiences, we don't then walk into our adulthood with a full adult perspective that comes with the understanding that now as an adult, I can be rejected, I can be misunderstood, I can be more of myself, and I can be okay. And I can be, I can provide for myself. I can figure out what my own needs are. I can figure out what my own wants are. I can figure out my own way of being. And I can be rejected and I can be fine. We don't have that. We continue on with that nervous system imprint, that fundamentally being loved perfectly that being loved perfectly would equal a situation where we get our needs met perfectly and where we can then express ourselves perfectly. That's what we're all kind of striving for when we're striving for perfect love. Is that it's not that we want to just be accepted for the fact of being accepted. It's because we learned deep in our bodies that the only reason we're not getting our needs met, the only reason we're not being cared for the way we need to be cared for, the only reason we're not able to express the way we want to express is because we're not being loved. We learned deep in our nervous systems that being loved by someone outside of ourselves is the middleman between us and us getting our needs met and being able to express. So this is why, and again, right, depending on the degree to which you were not safe is the degree to which you are going to be very much looking for that perfect love and that perfect safety in that perfect love. Because the degree to which you weren't just accepted for who you were, the degree to which you didn't just experience safety as, as a byproduct of being alive, is the degree to which you now have, likely, for most of us, not everyone, but likely, these rules and these understandings of like, okay, this is what I did and this is what was causing them to withdraw and this is what caused them to withdraw. And we now have a whole worldview set up around trying to control ourselves 
to make ourselves worthy of love so that we will be perfectly loved in an attempt to get our needs met. So rather than stepping into the adult perspective where we start to say, okay, now that I'm an adult, I can start to understand what my own needs are. I can understand, I can start to understand how to communicate. I can start to understand how to be okay even though I'm rejected. And I can see that my reality now is different than it was when I was a child. Our perception got filtered. And now we're running these childhood programs with adult logic and adult reasoning piled on top, right? So now we go through our lives saying like, see, this person rejected me because I was loud and I knew that and that's because it's, that's true, that's a bad part of me. And we don't, so it, it filters our perception to now be hyper aware and hyper looking out for any evidence that supports what we already believe about ourselves and supports what we already believe about the world. Okay, when we come into our adulthoods, we're coming in with all of these stories we have from childhood. And then rather than being able to see reality objectively for how it is in our adult world, our minds are filtering. We have perception. And our perception is looking to solidify what we already believe. It's trying to hold on to the worldview we already have because that makes us feel safe and secure, right? The more we believe we understand how reality already works, the more we believe that our worldview is true, the safer we feel. Because then it means that we can just go along with our worldview, we can keep acting the way that we've always acted and doing what we've always done, and that if we do it good enough, eventually we're going to be safe and get our needs met. To think I might be seeing things incorrectly could be very liberating and freeing and true, but it's always going to be very uncomfortable to challenge our perceptions because that then means that we don't have a solid worldview and then therefore a solid plan of what we need to do and what we need to be in order to find safety, right? Most of us are not saying, I don't know how to find safety. We're saying, no, I know exactly how to find safety. I need to change myself to become this specific perfect thing. And in doing that, I will finally be loved, finally be accepted, everyone will love me, and then I will get my needs met. Right? We're not saying, what are my needs? How do I get my needs met practically? What does it mean to meet my needs as an adult? We're saying, what do I need to do to be perfectly loved? So that those who love me will then perfectly understand me and meet my needs for me and then allow me to grow and express the way that I want to grow and express. That's the childhood view that we all carry forward as our, this is how the world works. I need to be loved and I need to be accepted and I need to be approved of so that the people around me will understand me and the people around me will help me get my needs met and take my pain away. So to a degree, many of us are seeking perfect love and we are trying to perfect ourselves we are trying to get rid of all the parts of ourselves we think are being rejected by others. We are trying to perfect ourselves to become perfect manifestors and perfect, perfectly perfect eaters and perfect everything. Because we think if we reach this level of perfection, finally someone outside of us is going to see that. They're going to approve of it. And then through that love and approval, our needs will get met. Do you see? We're not seeing. Now as an adult, it's my job to understand what my needs are, to communicate them to others, to work with other adults in getting my needs met and getting their needs met, to understand that I can be rejected and still have food and still have water and still have shelter. We're not seeing that. We're locked in to what did I do wrong that caused me to be rejected? 
And how do I fix that about myself? So that I will finally get that perfect love that I've always wanted, which will then make me perfectly safe. Yeah? And then our culture teaches us to hold on to this idea. Our culture over and over and over reinforces if you're not in a cis, het, straight, normal relationship, your life is unfulfilling. Our culture teaches us that if you don't fit in, you're not good enough. You're not going to be safe. You don't get your needs met. Our culture constantly reinforces that if you get rejected, you cannot be okay. And this is how they sell pretty much everything to us, right? If we look at the marketing of most things, it's this is going to make you, this is going to say something about you. This is going to say something about who you are and what it means about you to have this thing or to have this job or to have this degree or to have this kind of relationship. And that by following through with that, you're going to be loved. You're going to be accepted. You're going to be approved of, right? We have literal micro trends where everything is a trend and the trends are always changing so that we're constantly chasing. What do I need to do and what do I need to be to fit in? Because we're all triggered by that, that I'm not going to fit in. I'm not going to be loved and therefore I'm not going to get my needs met. I'm not going to be safe. And so again, a lot of us in our romantic relationships, in our friendships, in our close love relationships, we are first and foremost going to find that we are attracted. So it's not that we are attracting like some law of attraction thing. Rather, our nervous systems are attracted to people who are similar to our caregivers and to the friends that we had growing up. Because that's where we learned our patterns of who we need to be and what we need to be and the social constructs we learned around what we need to do and what we need to be in order to get love. We are not going to be attracted to people who necessarily match who we really are and love who we really are and would make space for our true genuine self. Because we have nervous system programs that tell us that our true genuine self is the reason we didn't get loved. It's the reason we got separated from the people we depended upon for everything. And so we have developed an existential relationship with these parts of ourselves. We don't want to express them. We don't want to let them out. We have hate and shame and blame about these parts. And again, like I said, this is why we go so deep into this in the mystery school. It's like a year long curriculum because unpacking this is so challenging because again, it's not just in our minds that we decided to hate these parts. It's that we learn deep in our bodies that these parts of me are the reason I get separated from everything that I know and everything that I need in order to be safe. And they are an existential threat to me. And so we are not going to want to embrace them. We don't want to express them. We don't want to be them. Even if we're around people who would like those things, we're going to still perceive that these parts are dangerous. We're going to look for all the people that reinforce that perception. We're going to block out all the people that don't reinforce that perception. We're going to project and hate other people who have the, the parts of us that we have rejected in ourselves, we're gonna hate it in other people because we're trying to keep ourselves safe. So we're gonna be attracted to the people that match what we already know to be the rules of relationships. And therefore we are going to continue to reinforce that this is what everyone wants, this is what everyone thinks, this is how it really truly is because we're gonna surround ourselves with people who match our current perception. And we are going to really, truly, again, be caught in that loop of I need to perfect myself. 
I need to change these things about myself. These things are bad about me in order to get the love that I want. We're going to notice our codependencies. We're going to notice the ways that we fawn. We're going to notice the ways that we go totally scorched earth. I don't trust you. You made a mistake. I can't interact with you. Wall goes up. And we're going to think this is something wrong with me. Yeah? We're going to get into the healing health and we're going to think, well, why am I like this? What, what's wrong with me that I'm codependent? What's wrong with me that I'm a, how do I fix this about myself? And again, we need to recognize it's like, that's how you learned to be acceptable to the best of your ability in your childhood. And you are continuing to play that out in the hopes that if you just finally get yourself to be acceptable enough, you will be loved. So that's why in finding love, in finding healthy relationships, there's no quick fix. There's no one size fits all. There's no, we, we just realize these things and we can like polarize ourselves or have a cacao ceremony or something and transcend all of this. Because these patterns are deep, 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 deep in our bodies. They're not just things we learned with our logical adult mind. Yeah? We experienced, first and foremost, the first several years of our life when we were learning how life works. That to be rejected, to not be loved, to not be understood was to be fundamentally unsafe. So now, even if we are the most independent, capable, strong adult, we may not even be perceiving that we are that. We may still be perceiving that we need perfect love, that we need to be approved of, that we need to fix ourselves and change ourselves so that we will be loved by someone outside of ourselves. Because it's still deep in there that that's what's required for our safety for our survival. Okay, so, and then this leads into why do we perpetually get ourselves into unhealthy relationships? Why are we perpetually seeking perfect love and trying to either change ourselves and fix ourselves and mold ourselves in some way to be perfect? Or the other way, right, of just constantly looking for the red flags even when they don't necessarily exist? and going scorched earth and going independent or being somewhere along that spectrum because we still have that fundamental belief that perfect love is the way to perfectly getting our needs met and being safe. And so what do we have to do to get that perfect love? Do we need to protect ourselves from all harm? Do we need to be codependent, fawning, Right? Do we need to change ourselves in all sorts of ways to be what other people want us to be? And then again, we're going to be attracted to the people who are similar to the people we grew up with because that's what our nervous systems know how to do. Right? Like we've all heard that the people who grow up, the women who grow up with alcoholic fathers are the most likely to marry alcoholic men. Is it because they all hate themselves? Is it because they all have no self-worth? No. It's because that's the pattern they know. That's how they know how to behave. And so again, right? It's that I have my worldview. This is what I need to do and this is what I need to be in order to be approved of. And I'm going to seek out situations that match that understanding so that I feel like I have the solution to my pain. I have the solution to why I'm not getting my needs met. It's because I'm not doing it this way. It's because I'm not doing that. It's because I'm not measuring up. So all I need to do is continue to try to fix myself to fit in the way that I'm supposed to fit in. Instead of saying, this might not be the way. This might not be how I get my needs met. Now as an adult, I need to learn a whole new set of skills 
of self-awareness, communication, interaction with other people in order to get my needs met, which is shifting my perspective, shifting my perception of how reality works, and figuring out, like I say, a whole new way of being. We're just going to say subconsciously, what do I need to do and what do I need to be to be that perfect person who will be perfectly loved by the caregivers I had? And how do I just keep striving to be that person so that eventually they will love me the way that I want to be loved so that I will finally be safe? So this is why a lot of us, again, we I've made a video on this, right? That we're striving to get our caregiver's approval. Even when we're not even aware that that's what we're doing. We, a lot of us have, again, that like scapegoat part that like, I need to fix this part of me. I need to get rid of this aspect of my personality. And this is the always the reason I'm not okay. When this part of me comes up, when this part of me is loud, when this part of me shows up, this is the reason I suffer. And we scapegoat it onto that part over and over and over again, right? Every time I'm loud, I perceive that's the reason I'm in pain, even if it has nothing to do with why I'm in pain. That's my scapegoat, because it reinforces my already held belief that the reason I was rejected by my caregivers is because I was loud, and if I could just get rid of this loud part, I'd be perfectly safe and perfectly loved. If we believed that the reason our caregivers didn't love us is because we weren't independent enough, we will constantly drive to be more and more and more and more and more independent. Every time we perceive pain, every time we perceive we're not safe, every time we perceive we're not going to get our needs met, our minds are going to try and figure out how we weren't independent enough. And that's going to be our coping mechanism, like our scapegoat that we go to. We're going to, our perception is going to filter out what actually happened, why we actually might be in pain, what needs are not being met, how and why they're really truly not being met. And our mind is going to go, this is the reason I wasn't independent enough here. I was too needy here. I was too weak here. So double down again on being more independent. Our minds are just going to continue to look for the evidence that reinforces what we already believe about ourselves, even when that's not happening. But then again, it gets complicated because a lot of the time it will be happening in our relationships. We, it will be re reinforced by the people that we are in relationship with because we will seek out people who also demand that we are independent because we know how to be in a relationship like that. And then if we were to be in a relationship with someone who wants us to be less independent, who actually likes that we depend on them sometimes, we will, we will have like no concept of that. And that will be a very confusing thing for us. And they will want us to be dependent on them and we will refuse and we will be confused and they will be confused and we will be trying to impress them by being independent and they will continue to be, you know, unimpressed that we're not being more dependent and then we're going to perceive that they're upset with us because we were being too needy even though they were actually happy that we were being needy and it's just going to be this big confusing mess because we're seeing through our perception we're not seeing through reality you see so unpacking all of this why we are attracted to the people we are attracted to why we have the relationship patterns we have why we have the beliefs about ourselves we have. These are all going to stem all the way back through our lives and the experiences that we've had. And then learning to come into the adult perspective is not something that happens overnight. It's not something we can do a workshop on or one single thing that we do and we can come into our sense of autonomy and stop being codependent and stop being ultra independent and all of these things, right? And then to add to this, our society teaches us really unhealthy relating to, um, 
dynamics, right? Our society is based on the idea of hierarchy, the idea of competition, the idea of every man for himself. And the reason that we interact is either because you're going to help me get where I want to go or you're an impediment to where I want to go. Society teaches us to have very superficial relationships with ourselves and with others. And so we're piling that on top of the codependencies we all learned in the temporary codependent relationships we had as children with our caregivers. And we wonder why we have such a mess with our perception of relationships and our perceptions of ourselves and what actually is going to equal safety and how we're actually going to get our needs met. It's because it's very confusing and it's very muddled and it's very messed up. So this is why I hope that you can start to see first and foremost from everything that we've talked about here today that whatever relationship patterns you have, whatever parts of yourself you think are the reason you are not being loved and therefore the reason you are not safe, whatever you're going through in terms of what your perception is with regards to what you have to do and what you have to be in order to find love and that the reason, the reasons you are assigning to the idea that you're not finding love may have come not from your adult true self, right? But from childhood perspective and also from culture, right? Culture also tells us that like, if we're not paired up, that we did something wrong, that we can't be fulfilled, that we can't be safe, and our society is set up in a way to like really highly reward people who are coupled up in this very traditional way. And to create a lot of um, separation and isolation for people who don't have that. And so like, right, there's this whole coaching industry around polarization and finding your feminine or finding your masculine so that you can attract people and like how to uh, change yourself in some way so that you will be attractive to the member of the opposite sex or a member of the same sex or whatever but it, still that you will find that partner and that that's the one right way to have a relationship because it divides us so it's not to say that partnership isn't great. And it's not to say that a lot of us might not find happiness and fulfillment in partnership. But it's also to say that this, this ultra prioritization of the nuclear family isn't necessarily a healthy thing for us. Because again, it drives us into a state where we're depending on a partner to be our best friend, our therapist, our sibling, our parent, our co-parents, our co-house runner, our co-workers. And this is just far too much for any one person to be for any one person. But again, right, we're taught that this is the only way to have a legitimate relationship. And then we're taught something that feels very true to our childhood self, which is if you don't have this, it's because you're flawed in some way. And you can rearrange your inner world and do enough per personal work and enough manifesting to finally attract that person who's gonna come and like fill all these boxes for you and be that perfect love that will lead to you feeling perfectly safe. And then again, we will either be codependent or we'll be ultra independent, scorched earth, if you make a mistake, I'm never gonna to talk to you again, looking for people to be absolutely everything, otherwise we see it as a threat and we cut them off, or 
constantly trying to change yourself and fix yourself and be what other people want you to be, being attracted to the people who are never going to love you because they are like how your caregivers were. They aren't, they aren't actually going to love the real you. They are not capable of loving the real you. But you also don't want to have to be the real you because the real you is scary to you. You see? It's complicated. And it's complex. So what do we do? Okay. First and foremost, I want to say, some of us are going to need therapy. Right? Some of us are going to need one-on-one attention, one-on-one coaching. We need someone to help us recognize our patterns, recognize our wounds. We're not going to get through it in a day or a week or a month. We're going to have to process the pain of our childhoods, how we were antagonized, where our needs weren't met, where we were taught literally that parts of ourselves were not okay, where we made that up and it wasn't even really true. That's not why we were being rejected, but we perceived that it was. There's going to be a lot of untangling that most of us need to do to really get at why we have the patterns that we have. But again, that first step is understanding that we have the patterns that we have because we learn deep in our bodies early 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 in our lives that to be loved perfectly would be to be safe perfectly we seek for perfect love because we are seeking perfect safety we didn't have the adult perspective that could understand that eventually we were going to get to a place where we could meet our own needs where we could be rejected and still be okay, where we could understand and communicate and cooperate, and where we didn't understand that there were going to be people out there who were not like our caregivers, who liked us for who we actually are, who have different standards and different ideals and different ways of living. We didn't have that perspective. All we knew was caregivers are God, they provide me with everything, and the only reason I'm not getting what I need is because I'm doing something wrong. And it's very, 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 very difficult to come out of that way of thinking. This is why shame, blame, and guilt, I say, are always lies. Shame, blame, and guilt are the ways we are trying to fix ourselves, to be perfectly lovable based on our childhood perspectives of what was expected of us so that all of our pain will go away. And this blocks us from seeing where our pain is actually coming from, what we actually need, what we actually want, who we actually are. And we get locked into this cycle of never being able to find safety and never being able to find expression Because now we're trying to get rid of parts of ourselves and change ourselves to fit into something in the hopes that that will then lead to us being able to get our needs met and be fully expressed. When in our adult reality, we need to just figure out what we actually want and what we actually need and who we actually are and do that regardless of whether we're being loved or not. So like I say, this is why the mystery school is four years long. (laughs) Because getting through this, really understanding why we reject ourselves the way we reject ourselves, really understanding why we are attracted to the patterns we are attracted to, is deep. Okay, second thing. I don't want this to come across like I'm saying if you are in harmful dynamics, it's because you're attracted to it and it's your fault. It's not your fault. You did not choose the dynamics you grew up with. You did not choose the dynamics that your nervous system was going to get used to. You did not have autonomy as a child to actually understand what was going on in your life and to create the patterns and the coping mechanisms and the ways that you do things. You didn't create them. It was not a conscious adult choice. You did not choose the surroundings and the community that you're in 
that reinforce these ideas. You are not choosing to be abused. You are not choosing to stay in harmful dynamics. You are not choosing to be ultra-independent and never open to love. You're programmed and conditioned. It's not your fault. You're not choosing because you're weak or there's something wrong with you. Ever. That's never what it is. You're doing the best you can to keep yourself safe and to try to keep yourself alive with what you were given. And to understand that it is not your fault and that you never deserve it. You never deserve to be abused. You never deserve to be disrespected. Whether you have that programming or not, it doesn't matter. It does not then justify anyone treating you shittily or harming you because that's your pattern. That's still not making it okay. It's never okay. Okay, so we need to really understand that. Just because it's your pattern, just because that's what you're used to, doesn't make it okay, doesn't justify it. At all. Even if that's your pattern, you never deserve to experience that again in your adulthood. It's just that we live in a world where people do this. They are abusive because they learn to be abusive. We accept abuse because we learn to accept it. It's not our fault. We don't deserve it. And learning new ways is hard. But this is what this whole self-love path is all about. Is learning how to see beyond our conditioning into what's really going on and then stepping into that adult perspective so that we can figure out what our needs actually are what we actually want, how to actually get our needs met in our adult relationships with, like I say, cooperation, communication, healthy ways of being that are not based on the relationship dynamics we learned growing up. It, it, it starts to be empowered adults working with empowered adults instead of inner children all looking for approval from one another and repeating patterns. So we have therapy, we have the mystery school, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching, we have books. There are lots and lots and lots of resources to help you start to understand where your programs came from and why they are there. But we start with that compassion. We start with curiosity. We start with understanding that there's nothing wrong with us and that perfect love is never going to exist. We are never going to find perfect love that leads to perfect safety because perfect safety doesn't exist. And that's the hardest pill to swallow. When we stop searching for perfect love, what we are really doing is ending our search for perfect safety. And we are coming into the adult perspective that there's never going to be a liberation from pain for forever if we just perfect ourselves enough. If we just get perfect love, perfect wealth, or perfect health. That we are going to have to figure things out one step at a time. That life is complex. And that getting our needs met is more complicated than just being approved of and perfectly loved. And that's going to help us understand our own autonomy and our own power over time. So we can stop being scorched earth. You let me down, I can't handle that. Or codependent and fawning and all of these things. It's when we start to realize our empowerment. We start to realize where we have autonomy. Where we're not dependent on others. Where life isn't perfect and we can figure it out. And we start to understand how to cooperate. And work in community beyond just individual partnership to find good enough love good enough relationships good enough we trust ourselves enough that we can be in good enough love 
right? And that's a process. So anyone who's telling you they can hack your way into a perfect relationship or that you can manifest it or that you can, you know, do a ceremony or two and heal all of your trauma doesn't understand the lineage that you're working with. And so we need to be willing to be compassionate and curious with ourselves for a very long time, to really be questioning of our shame and our guilt, that these are the foundations of finding the ability to be in a truly healthy relationship, is getting to know ourselves enough that we can start to communicate, understand our own needs, be interdependent, not independent or codependent. So I hope that this video gives you a sense of like, there's nothing wrong with you, that you're in the real dynamics that you're in and that it's more complicated than we usually think it is. And that finding good enough love starts with understanding all this stuff. So then we can get on a real process of unpacking all of this and working through it and sorting through it. Okay? We're never going to find perfect love or perfect safety, but we can find good enough. And finding good enough starts with finding self-love. And it starts with finding autonomy and our power and how we can get our own needs, be aware of our own needs, communicate our own needs, get our own needs met in an adult way. And again, it's never your fault and you're never deserving of abuse or harm, whether that's your pattern or not. I just really wanna make that clear. No one is ever, ever, ever deserving of that. And there are times and places where we are going to experience relationships that absolutely do heal us, where people treat us differently, and that's the reason we heal or we get a good therapist or we get a good partner or get we get a good friend and it shows us something else is possible. So it's not to say that we have to do all this work all by ourselves. Right? That's why I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is why I have the mystery school. This is why I suggest therapy. This is why I suggest whatever kind of supports call to you in working through this. Don't do it alone. You don't have to do it alone. It's just about learning to get to know yourself. You're never deserving of harm. You're never deserving of abuse. No matter what your patterning is, ever, 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 it's never your fault. And finding where you have autonomy to, to make things better for yourself is a big part of this. And where you need to ask for help and where you need to ask for support and where you need to ask for help to get out. Also big things, okay? So that's that. I hope that was clarifying and helpful. I have lots of videos on my YouTube channel around this if you want to watch them. Look for resources. Open yourself up to compassion and curiosity. What do you need to be supported instead of what is wrong with me? That's where we start. Okay? Okay. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a lovely week. I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you.